hey, this is Becca with eXp. So you're interested in VA loans. That's great. There's so much to know. Watch this video where Chris explains it all. And thank you for your service. Give me a call when you're done. Hey, this is Chris the Mortgage Pro. I'm gonna introduce you to what is a VA loan, how does it work, and 20 things you must know about a VA loan. Now, anytime through the video, please like, share, and comment, because I answer every question personally, and thank you for your service. Number one, if you have an honorable discharge, or a general discharge. A general discharge basically is somebody, sometimes the military for one reason or another just lets you go early. You didn't do anything wrong, but with a general discharge, you can also get a VA loan. If you have a less than honorable discharge, you would not be entitled. Number two, DD-214. I need your DD-214 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, send it to the VA and I'm going to get what's called your Certificate of Eligibility. That's going to tell us how much you're entitled to for a VA loan. Number three, people often think I can only have one VA loan at a time. Well, that's not true either. If the VA loan that you might currently have is for a small amount, you have an added eligibility. You're not gonna be able to buy two expensive homes with a VA, but very often I see people with two VA loans at the same time. Number four, maximum loan amount. Well, first of all, you can get a loan for a million dollars with a VA loan. How does that work? Aren't there limits? Well, kind of. What happens is the VA is going to guarantee 25% of the loan. Now, if the limit is 453,100, that's what it is right here in San Bernardino County, California. If you want a house $100,000 more, 553,100, you would be required to put as a down payment 25% of that amount. So 25% over 100,000, you put a $25,000 down. If you want a million dollar home, you just put 25% of the amount over the 453,100. Now in every county in the country, the loan amounts are different. The limits are different. So you'd have to check with your county or you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to figure it out wherever you are in the country and tell you exactly what the limit is. Number five down payment. Now I just mentioned in the last one, if you go over the limit, you have to put 25% of the amount over the limit for your county down. Otherwise, it is a zero down payment loan. That's a big deal. Where else are you going to get a zero down payment loan with the lowest interest rate? Number six, a funding fee. Now how a VA loan works is there is a funding fee. The first time you use it, it's 2.15% of the purchase price. So as an example, a $200,000 loan, 2.15% is $4,300. If you use it for the first time, they're going to add $4,300 to the loan amount. If you do it the second time, we're looking at 3.3%. So that would be $6,600 added to your loan amount. Now, there is one... Gotcha, one stipulation here. One thing that's really, really great is if you are a disabled vet, what happens is that funding fee is 100% waived. Doesn't exist, you don't pay it. Number seven, FICO score. FICO stands for Fair Isaacs Corporation. Basically, it's your credit score. Now, with a VA loan, some lenders all have different numbers. I do as low as a 550 FICO score in order to help you get approved with zero down. Now, the higher the FICO score, the more you save in fees and on interest rate. So we always want to take a look and see if we can raise your score easily and quickly in order to save you that extra money. However, very often with a 550 FICO score, I could get people approved. Number eight, if we know what the FICO score is and we know what we have to do, we know what the approximate purchase price is, we know what the approximate payment is, we're going to do what's called a pre-approval. Now, many people hear of it. It's not a pre-qualification. A pre-qualification says you told me the information verbally over the phone and I've been doing this for so long I know if you've been approved or not. But that's just a pre-qualification. A pre-approval requires me looking at all your documentation 
and I'm going to talk about the documentation in just a minute or two. But I'm going to look at all your documentation. I'm going to make sure your income is there. I'm going to make sure your assets are there. Your FICO score is there. Your DD-214, all the pieces, the certificate of eligibility. We're going to put all those pieces together. We're going to evaluate them. Now, after all these years, I could pretty much do it standing on my head. I know exactly what we need to do. But I take it to the next step. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take those documents and I'm going to, number one, I'm going to computerize them. I'm going to put them into the system. I'm going to let the computer run your numbers. And what's going to happen is we hope to get an approval. And basically, it'll come back saying approve eligible. That means you're approved, you're eligible. We do have to verify every little dot every I and cross every T. Now, once in a while, it doesn't come back approve eligible. It may say refer eligible. And that's usually when the income is either a little tighter or the credit score is lower on the 550, 580 and under range. So it happens all the time. And what we do at that point is we are allowed to do what's called a manual underwrite. Instead of the computer underwriting, we can send it to an underwriter who's going to evaluate all the numbers, crunch the numbers and say, does this meet VA guidelines for a VA loan? And very, very often we still get you approved. Number nine, we have you approved. The next step is an agent, real estate agent, is going to take you out and show you properties. Maybe you've already seen a property. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you have an agent. If you don't, I know all the top-notch agents in the area who are going to help you take it to the next level, show you the houses, show you what you are interested in. You're going to tell them, you know, I'm looking for this many bedrooms, this many bathrooms in this area. This is what I'm, the school district I want. I want a pool. Whatever it is, their job is to find that house and represent you. Number 10, we get an offer accepted. That means the real estate agent who listed the house has presented your offer, your price, and your terms to the seller, and the seller has accepted the terms. Now we're going to do what we call opening up escrow. We're ready to start the ball moving. Number 11, disclosures. We are going to disclose all the financial numbers to you. Sometimes this takes a day or two because there's a lot of numbers. Every fee, every everything has to be covered. We have to figure out where is this coming from? How much is it going to cost you? Maybe nothing. So we're going to talk about that later too. Number 12, the appraisal. We're not allowed to order the appraisal until the disclosures that I just talked about are signed. Once they're signed, we have to order the appraisal on a VA loan through the VA portal and the VA is going to assign an appraiser. They randomly will pick an appraiser. We're not allowed to call them up. Hey, Harry, I want you to go do John's appraisal. It doesn't work that way. We have to do this randomly and through the VA portal. They're going to order the appraisal, which takes usually about a week or so. They're going to go visit the property. They're going to look at every little instance, every little thing. They're going to take pictures of the house, make sure it's safe. They're going to look at all different things to make sure and value. They're going to show us what the value that they figure is. They're going to say, okay, here's a comparable home three blocks away. Here's another comparable home a half a mile away that sold three months ago. And here's one right down the block. Well, this was the square footage here. This is the square footage on this. And they're going to compare. They're going to crunch all the numbers. We don't get involved in that. But it's going to come back and say, this is the value of the house. We do that to ensure a couple of things. One, the lender wants to be sure that they're lending you money for a house that's worth what they're lending you. Number two, we also want to protect you. Because what if you offer $300,000 for a house, but it's only worth two seventy-five? dollars That wouldn't make any sense for you. So it's there to protect you and there to protect the lender. Number 13, income. We need documentable, provable income. If you can't prove it on paper, it doesn't exist. If you started working a job last week, a second job, just because you did that doesn't mean we can use the income. We can use one job and all the income or two jobs if you've been working that job for two years. So a lot of people try and buy a house, so they just, we started three months ago. Well, that's great that you save some extra money, but we can't use that income. Now, how do we determine income? Super important. Are you paid hourly? 
Are you paid salary? Salary is easy. You get paid $5,000 a month, you $5,000 a month. But if you get paid $20 an hour, okay, how many hours do you work? A 40-hour work week or do you work a 50-hour work week? Well, we're going to use the 40-hour work week and the rest is going to be overtime. How we use overtime is we average it over the last two years because if you started working overtime six weeks ago, we can't use that. Also, bonuses and commission, we have to average those also. See, it can't be brand new income with no history. They need to see a history to determine, can you really afford this? If you're a disabled vet and you receive disability income from the VA, what happens is we can gross that up 25%. Let me explain. If you are, let's say, a 50% disabled and you're getting roughly $1,000 a month, we get to add 25% of that, so it's $1,250 as your income. Why can we do that? Well, you don't pay taxes on that money, so that's a big deal. We evaluate your income taxes. The family, not just yours, if, if your wife or husband is going on the loan with you, we can use both incomes. But only a husband and wife can go on the same VA loan or two veterans. As an example, you cannot have a fiance and, and the veteran. It just doesn't work that way. They must be married or both of them would have to be veterans. True story. I once went to a wedding where I did a loan for my friends. They wanted to buy this house, but they weren't married yet. So what I did was I told them, you have to be married if you're going to get this house because you need both incomes. I went to their wedding six months later, and my wife and I were the only people there who knew they'd been married for six months. Number 14, documentation. Super important. You know, for most people, it's pretty straightforward. If it's a VA loan, we always start the most important document to start with is we need your DD-214. We start there. We're going to order your certificate of eligibility so you don't have to. Next, we're going to look at your income. We need one month's pay stubs. If your spouse is also on the loan, one month obviously for both, if you have jobs. We also need two years of income taxes and two years of W-2s. Very often when we run the approval, it will not require income taxes, but we do ask for them upfront because in most cases it will. We're also going to ask you for two months of bank statements. Every single page, please don't blacken everything out. They won't accept that. We need two months of bank statements. We need a social security card and a driver's license. Now, if you have a 401k or you have some kind of other income or documentation for savings of some kind, whether it's retirement savings or whatever, it just makes your case stronger. So give us that too. If you've had a bankruptcy in the recent past, we're going to need bankruptcy documentation also. So these things change with everybody. Everybody, like a fingerprint, has a little bit of a different situation. So we start there and then the underwriter is going to ask for a little bit more and a little bit more to prove little things. Sometimes a little can of worms opened up with a deposit that you made or something. So they're always going to ask for more. Get used to it. That's how it works. Number 15 termite report. You know, with an FHA loan, conventional loans, other types of loans, we very often do not need a termite report. On a VA loan, it is mandatory every single time. They are meant to protect you as the consumer. You as the veteran who's buying this home, they want to make sure you don't have a ton of termite damage or even a little termite damage that we don't want you to be responsible for. Number 16. It's starting to get exciting now. You're finding the house that you're looking for. We've gone through the pre-approval process. We ordered the appraisal. We ordered the termite. It goes to the underwriter and the underwriter reviews all the documents and we get the approval. And that is one of the most exciting things. We're at the stage where we have the approval. Now what happens is they're always going to say, I need this other piece of documentation or that piece of documentation. That is very normal stuff, but at least we know this is exactly what we need to get you in your own home. Number 17, you meet those conditions, the conditions that the underwriter asks for. He may say, let me see the homeowner's insurance, or I don't like this, or I don't like that. Let me just prove that. You give us all those conditions. Hopefully, you gave it to us very quickly, because the quicker you give us the documents, the quicker we close your loan. Number 18, 
closing disclosures. These are the final numbers that is going to be used for the closing. It's going to say, this is your interest rate. This is what this costs. This is what that costs. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but these are the final numbers. If you have to come in with any money, and we're still going to talk about if you do or not, this is how it works. They're going to give you the final numbers. Number 19. Along the way, there were a couple of things that have happened. One is you know that you had usually a zero down payment loan with the VA. However, there are still closing costs. Now, there are three ways to pay closing costs. One is we ask the seller to pay, and sometimes we do get them to pay, and sometimes you ask them for $8,000 for closing costs, and they say, we're going to pay $3,000. So it's a negotiation back and forth. Sometimes you pay, you can pay the rest. Or sometimes I can raise the interest rate up just a little bit, and by doing that, I get what's called a lender credit, and we could apply that to closing costs. Now, sometimes the seller says, I'll pay three, we raise the, the interest rate a little bit, we get $3,000 in the lender credit, and you pay $2,000 out of your pocket. See, it could be any combination of those things. But this is how a VA loan works. Yes, zero down payment, but somebody's still got to pay those closing costs. Number 20, you sign the documents. You sign the documents, you and whoever is on title, your spouse or whoever it is. You sign the documents. And then usually, sometimes the same day if it's done real early or the next day, we fund the loan. That means the money has been wired to pay off your, the other loan, to pay off the purchase, and now the house is yours with one small exception. The county has to record it. Once they put their stamp of approval, it is recorded with the county. You have successfully, after 20 steps, fired your landlord.